Hi, uh, I'm Andy, and we're back again uh, in the middle of the night. Um, this is a video uh, about how to build a simple menu structure uh, for the game that we're building uh, using Android Studio. Uh, just before we start, uh, worth pointing out that I uh, made quite a few decisions in what I'm doing based on the patterns that are described. Um, in the Android documentation, they, they're quite, uh, they've got quite a lot to say about how you should style the navigation in your, um, program. I'm not following some of it. Um, I'm following some of it. It's, um, where I'm not following it is mainly because, um, I already have a menu structure. Uh, that I would like to have, and it's not quite as cool as what they're describing that I know it'll work on um, other platforms, not just on the phone, so I'm going to do it. So if you're going to, uh, this video should be useful if you're going to have a few levels of menu um, and you like your user interfaces, simple. So um, uh, we're back in Android Studio. If you haven't used Android Studio yet, uh, try the previous video in which I showed how to install it and make a very basic application. This time we're going to make a program with a menu structure. Next time we'll make um, the game part of our game uh, by doing the game loop, which actually draws stuff and all the fun stuff. So we're going to make a new project for this. I'm going to call it uh, Menu Sample. Um, we'll go for the same compatibility level that we did last time, as in a very low compatibility level. And we're going to make uh, a blank activity. We'll put our menu inside there. So, um, uh, as I was saying last time, an activity is um, a place that you can be in an Android application. Um, the rule of thumb is if you press back, you leave an activity and go back to the previous activity. Um, in order to make this menu structure, which has several levels of menu, we're not going to make one activity for each level of menu. We're going to make one activity, um, but then you reuse a new version of it, a new instance of it, a new copy of it, every time you go to a different place in the menu. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully I haven't uh, done something really stupid. Let me know in the comments if I've just done it wrong. Okay, I'm going to call this activity menu activity because it's an activity that is a menu. Uh, and we'll let it build our project for us. So we've got uh, this thing called activity menu, which is our layout. If I go to the design view on that, Um, we can see uh, the design of this component now. It's telling me that there's something wrong with the theme, so let's choose a different theme. Let's try the classic theme. Okay, so this is what um, our, our activity looks like at the moment. Uh, it's a relative layout with a text view in it. We don't want a text view in it. What I'm going to do to implement this menu is just have a very, very simple list view. So I can just drag the list view onto there, drop it in the top left so it knows to align it properly um, with the top. Um, uh, so now we've got a relative layout containing a single list view, and all our menu items are going to appear in our list view. So Let's go back to our menu, go back to our Java code, put me where I'm a bit more out of the way, have a look at the code that we've got. So we made a blank activity, um, just like last time, and the, the bit of the code that we're interested in is what happens in the onCreate method, that's where we're going to set up our menu items. So 
first first thing we're going to do is just put any menu items at all into the menu and we're going to try it out and see whether it works so we've made our list view it's currently empty so we're going to make some strings we're going to make an array of strings which are going to be the items in our menu and they're going to be things like Start game demo. I'm also going to have an about box in theory in this game, but none of this will actually get done this time. So there's an array of menu items. Um, in fact, I'm going to want that to be always the same no matter what. So right at the beginning here, let's just make that a static final. Fields. So those menu items are always the same, no matter what's going on. And then what we want to do is tell the list to display those menu items. The way we do that is we make uh, a adapter. Um, an adapter is basically a thing that makes something look like stuff that a list can handle. In this case, we're going to make an array look like something a list can handle. And we're going to use a class called array adapter. Array adapter of string. Now, um, if we hover over this, we can do Alt Enter, and that class will get automatically imported for us. Oops. Um, and an array adapter takes in uh, some context and what is it? Uh, a layout and I think we want list menu list layout layout yeah simple list item one so what we're saying is um, uh, uh, how we want those items to look in our list is just like the standard simple uh, one of the simple ways of laying out list items recorded which is called simple list item one this is part of the Android uh, code and then of course we have to give it the actual array which is called menu items so now we've made an array adapter which is um, Type of adapter that can be used by list view. Now we get hold of our list view. So we made it in that XML view, but now let's get hold of it here. And the way you do that in any Android application, uh, if you want to find a bit of your UI, you say find view by ID and then with its ID here. So find view by ID and then the ID of the thing you want to find and then you have to cast it unfortunately to the type that you happen to know it is. Now how do I know that ID? Well if we go back to here and look at this list view we can see its ID just from looking at it there. We can see that its ID is just the word list view and here's its ID property ID list view so that's how we knew what its ID was. And notice that completely in the background, without us even noticing, Android has taken this XML definition, which by the way is actual XML, and here's the ID of that list view in that XML. This is just another way of viewing it. Uh, Android's looked at that XML um, definition of our layout, and it's gone off and generated a load of objects, including this uh, this constant or list view. So we can just refer in our Java code to r.id.listView and we know that uh, we can trust that Android's done um, or the build system has done what's needed to make that um, a valid ID. I believe all the generated stuff that comes up in this build stuff not, maybe not in there maybe 
somewhere else. Or maybe somewhere I can't think of right now. Hmm, I would assume it would be in the intermediate square. No. Uh, oh, yes, 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 okay, there it is. Is it? Yes, here's our R of it. So that R here, I believe, is this R here. And it's got a load of stuff in there that's generated from our XML. And somewhere in here, there should be a list view. If I'm right. No, I'm not right. Hmm. I'll tell you what we can do though. If we control click on list view. Oh no, it's too clever. It takes us straight back to the XML. Okay. Never mind. The point is, somewhere that I can't find right now, um, the Gradle build process has looked at the XML and made some Java code, which means that this uh, r.id.list view, which by the way just gives us back a number, is valid. When we do find view by ID, we know it'll go and find the thing with that ID. We happen to know that thing is a list view, so we cast it to a list view, now we've got a list view. Anyway, all of that was so that we could do list view dot set adapter. And we could give it the adapter we've already made. Uh, and now that list view will um, listen to uh, the items in that adapter and display them. So, without further ado, let's see whether we're anywhere near having this program working. Let's run it. And while we're waiting for it to kick off, I'll also kick off the device monitor so that I can show you a screenshot of it running, if it works. It says it's executing tasks at the moment. I guess it's um, building and copying stuff over to my phone. I told it to run on my um, on my phone, just like last time. Again, just like last time, if it works properly on my phone, it should work on pretty much anything. So, still building. Right, now we have to choose which device we want to run it on. I'll choose my phone. Oh, it wants to close the monitor, okay. Not sure why. Let's open it up again. Um, so, I'm looking down at my phone, I can see that it's worked, but uh, just for your benefit. That's what the screen looks like on my phone, so you can see the three menu items that we've added in uh, are indeed on the screen. So, next thing we want to do is um, respond when you um, when you press on one of those items and do something. And for the moment what we'll do is just print something out. Um, now I'm not 100% sure I needed to do this, but I found a property here called clickable on this list view and I'm, I ticked it to make sure that you're allowed to click on this item. No idea whether you need that or not. The other thing that you definitely do need is you need to tell the list view that there is a uh, that you want to, that you are interested in clicks on its items. So we say list view dot set on item click listener and we make a new on item click listener like this. And if I can just fight the layout for a bit. Um, when I've really when I'm really happy in um, IntelliJ and, and also I've done it with Eclipse when I've been using that, um, the code layout 
is exactly how I want it because I've spent the time fiddling with it, but uh, I haven't spent the time fiddling with this. So I have to be fighting it. Um, you just have to enjoy watching me lay out code. Um, okay, so an, an on item click listener is something that's um, an interface that's part of the um, adapter view and so it's all related to these adapters. But anyway, the point is, um, in order to be able to listen to um, events where the user has clicked on an item, we we set an on item click listener. We're making a new instance of an on item click listener right here in the code. And for the moment, all we're going to do is print something out. So I'm going to do a write out a log message and the log message I'm going to write out is going to be a menu item oh, I'm just formatting my code. Um, what we're going to print out is this is the uh, tag so it's just something to help you search when you're looking in the log uh, to see what's going on and then what we're actually going to uh, print out as our message is the menu item at that position. So when the item click event comes in, it tells us which item was clicked on, which is that position. So we're going to look up in our menu items thing, find out what position was clicked, and we're going to print out that item. So let's launch that. And then once that's up and running again, I'm just watching my phone to see when it happens. Um, I'm going to click on some menu items and with any luck we're going to get those menu items printed out in our log. So I'm clicking on demo for example. And I'll turn off our filter. Um, and add a search just for that tag that I added. You can see the demo um, was printed out and if I click on about I should say about, I'm not very good at clicking or touching, I should say. And then I click start game. So I click start game a few more times. We should see it happening a few more times. I click on demo. Okay, so the point is um, when I click on a, um, one of those menu items, we get that event and we're able to write it out. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is. I want to uh, not just have um, one layer of menu items, I want to be able to um, navigate through a whole hierarchical menu uh, of items. So rather than just having uh, an array of strings here, what I actually want to have uh, is uh, a whole collection, a whole hierarchical description of a menu. So the way I'm going to do that is like this. I'm going to make a class um, for the sake of uh, this video I'll make it in this inside this class so that maybe it belongs in its own. I'm going to call it my item and it's basically going to take the place of these strings. So it's going to have a name this final wherever I can and it's going to have um, a bunch of children and those children could be more items themselves and it's going to have an action and actually what it's going to have is um, it's always going to have a name but then either children or action will be null so um, you can either be an item that has children or you can be an item that does something. Now you may want you may not want to work it that way, but that's the way I want these menus to work. They either you're either going further down in the hierarchy or you're actually doing something. So if you want something that actually does something, your constructor looks like this. You just supply a name and an action. Children is going to be null. Uh, 
Um, but if you're something that has children, that means you don't have an action. So we have a different constructor for you. Still has a name, but now it takes a whole load of other items. As it's children. So yeah, it looks something like this. Except we have children here. No work. So basically we either make you with children or we make you with an action. Uh, now I've got that structure. Uh, I can change many items to use it. So I wouldn't, by the way, want to call it my item in my real code, but I wasn't sure whether I was going to get name clashes with something if I called it menu item, so I thought I'd, um, I'd avoid confusion, just call it that. This is a class we've written. So, start game is going to have some sub options, whereas demo and about are not, so demo is just going to be I'm going to have a name and an action, which I'm going to call demo. About is going to be similar. Um, but start game is going to have some sub items. So I'm going to pass an array to the constructor instead of just a string for an action. If, by the way, this style of um, code with lots of deeply nested arrays troubles you, um, I'm sorry about that. Uh, the intention of it is to be more declarative uh, and have more immutable stuff. So the more stuff you make, you can make in one logical line of code, the less likely you are going to need to be to build it up by modifying it gradually. If it can just be completely immutable, um, it's much easier to reason about it, but it does mean you end up with uh, a, a deeply nested code structures. Um, but that's sort of a bit like this, so it must be good. Okay, so once you said start a game, you're going to choose the skill level. And the skill level that we're going to have is going to be easy. If you choose easy, then you just get the easy level. And it's going to be a hard as well. If you choose hard, you just get the hard level. But if you choose medium, there's loads of levels. Don't ask me why, it's just for the sake of um, demonstrating a multi level menu, but not having too much stuff. So, there's loads of medium levels. And each of them is, an, is another my item. Don't worry, we're stopping here. I'm just going to have a name like medium one. And its action is just called medium one. Let's have four of these. Continue fighting the formatting. So, we've defined in a declarative way um, a hierarchical menu structure. So start game, demo and about are at the bottom whoops are at the bottom level. But if you choose start game you get offered easy, medium or hard. And if you choose medium you get offered these four levels inside. So that's how it works in theory. Of course at the moment it doesn't work at all. Um, so let's have a look at what we've done wrong. So basically um, this array adapter of it is expecting an array of strings in here, but these aren't strings anymore, they're my items. So now we're using an array adapter of my item. Um, and basically a list view allows you to have an array adapter of any, any type of stuff. And it will just use two string on it to get you the right answer. If we want to log this, we're going to have to log out the action of the menu item that you chose. So, we're obviously not finished, um, but let's run the code like this and see what happens. So, that is kicking off. My phone may have decided to start installing updates, so 
Well, it better not. I've got no space for anything like that. So hopefully it won't. Um, I just want to show you a screenshot of what we've got now. So as you can see, uh, uh, the three menu items are now the instances of my item. But that's not exactly as pretty as we'd like, is it? So the first thing we need to do... Um, in fact, let me just test it. The other thing is, let me press a button and see what happens. I'm going to press a button. It does actually print out the actions. Um, and it failed in the case where action was null and it's actually crashed the program. So I need to deal with that as well. So first things first, in order to display it correctly, let's provide a two-string It just returns the name of the item, and then um, that's what's, what will get displayed in the list. I'll kick it off and show you that. Um, but the other thing we need to do is, in the case where there um, there is no action, we don't actually want to just write a log message, we want to go to the next layer of the menu. Um, so how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to launch a new activity to do that. First of all, let me show you. That's just loaded up now. And we're back showing the names of the menu items. That was because of the two string I added. So now in this on click um, handler, at the moment we're only printing out the action of the menu item that got chosen. But if that menu item is not uh, something that has an action, it's something that has children. We want to launch a new activity. The way we do it, do that is like this. We make a new intent. The, the phraseology of this is quite confusing, but it's almost like um, calling a function and passing arguments. But there's a roundabout way of doing it. You make an intent. You put some data in the intent, which is kind of like the arguments to the function. And then you say start activity, and you pass in the intent. Uh, and that's like calling the function. So we make a new intent. And I can't remember what we have to pass into the constructor. Well, first of all, let's import the intent class. Now let me look at what I've got in my notes that I'm passing into the constructor. Well, we pass in the activity that we're a part of and the class of the activity we intend to um, uh, start up. Um, oh, I'm putting this code in the wrong place as well. But this intent also needs a context. So what we're going to do, we're inside this on-click handler, but actually what we want is that this, that is just the, um, the this in this code here. So what I'm going to do is keep hold of that like this. I'm going to make a um, a variable called parent activity, which holds on to the menu activity that we're currently in. I'm going to make that the final uh, variable so that we can use it safely inside here. Now, I realized I'm doing this wrong, um, because actually sometimes we do just want to print out the action like we did before. So we're going to do this with an if. We're going to say if. Oops, before we do that, we're going to get hold of the of the menu item that we're talking about. So, so get hold of the menu item that got clicked. If that item is an action, then just print out the action. This is so we're going to leave we're going to leave this code pretty much exactly as it is now. Um, because we're pretending that some other action is going to happen when you click that menu item. But um, we're not actually going to do any more on that, we're just going to leave it there. So um, items without any children are just going to log a message. But items that do have children require us to launch a new activity. The way we launch new activity is we make an intent, we pass in the current context of where we 
are and we pass in the type of class we want to, the type of activity we want to go to. And in this case, we want to go to another instance of menu activity, um, which is where we are already. So then, in order to launch this menu activity, all we have to do is say, um, uh, is it launch, create, Start, start activity, and pass in our intent. Uh, however, we've missed out the bit where we actually send any information about um, what we want that activity to do. So if we leave the code like this, it will launch a new menu activity, but that menu activity will be exactly like the menu activity we're in now. And we won't be able to see the difference. It will still have those three any options, start game, demo, and about. So what we need to do is pass in some information to this new menu activity, telling it um, that it's not um, it's not it's not at that level of the menu. So this menu activity is going to keep this completely fixed menu structure, um, and that's going to be shared between all the menu activities. This is a static final field; it never changes. But each menu activity that we create is going to be is going to find itself at a different point within this hierarchy. So if we tell it nothing at all, it's going to start at the top and show you start game demo and about. But if we tell it, well, no, actually, you're inside start game, it's going to show you other options. So let me do that, and hopefully it'll become clearer. I'm going to do it in a simple way, and then later I'm going to do it really properly. So what we're going to do is pass in which menu item is already selected. So. The way we do that is we add in some extra stuff. Uh, which basically tells us the position in the menu uh, that, that we're at. So we know the position in the menu that we're at when this click happened. What we're going to do is make uh, a known string, which is so in intents can have a whole load of extra stuff put in them. You can do put extra with loads of different things, and this uh, value here is basically the key uh, of a map. So you can go and then get that stuff out again later, which we'll do in a sec. Uh, you use that string to say, "Get me back the x." So in this case, all we're going to put in is position. All we're going to get out again is position, um, but we'll have a constant string for that so that we can use it in several places. So I've, I've made this variable; it's not defined, but I can just alt return, and it will offer to create me a constant field. I'll create it inside menu activity. I'm going to just for sure call it. It can just be any old string you like, but that'll do. Uh, in fact, I think they tell you that you should have you should have your package name in there, uh, just in case there was some kind of clash with um, someone else launching your activity and putting stuff in there or something like that. Okay, the, uh, the basically it doesn't matter. This is an arbitrary string, and when you choose a menu item that is not an action, so it must have children. And what we do is we make an intent saying open the menu activity at position, position, and then start it. So that's all very well. We've told it we want it to open in, in this position, but we haven't actually listened to that information back at the beginning. So what we have to do is, when we're getting created, which is in the on create, we have to get that, the information out that may have been passed into us and do something about it. So what we're going to do is... We're going to call get intent. So if I just do alt return, it'll make me a local variable there. So now I've got hold of the intent that was passed into us. So in order to find stuff out, I can say what position are we at in this menu? You get extras, but you have to say what type of extra you want. So, in this case, um, I know that we put an int in in that position. Um, I'm going to default to position of minus one, meaning we haven't chosen any positions. Um, and yeah, so now we've found out uh, what number. 
the person put into the uh, the intent, and we're going to use it. So the way we're going to use it is if position is minus one, so that means uh, we're in the starting setup. The menu items we're interested in are the top level thing. So we'll just um, get hold of the menu items and put it into a variable called item. Otherwise, items is going to be the one, the children of the menu item at position, position. So this items variable is going to end up with the menu items that we should be displaying in this menu. So let's actually respond to the fact that I haven't declared it yet by doing another alt enter. If we're lucky, it'll put it in the right place. Yes, it did. So now we know that items is either going to be the whole, the top level menu, menu items, or we're going to look inside that for one of those items at the right position that we've been told, and pick out its children, and those are the items we're interested in. Which is all very well. Except, uh, we're not using items. Well, let's use items. So instead of using menu items, that top level thing directly to find out which item got clicked, uh, we need to look in this new thing we've made, which is the items we're currently interested in. Um, I had to make that final so that we can use it in there. Actually, while I'm here, this is all getting a bit cluttered. So let's just do some refactoring. So refactor extract. Has that gone off the side of the screen? So I can't find it. Let's try that. Refactor extract method. And the method we'll call, let's call it, um, let's call it navigator items. So basically, um, what this method does is looks inside, given a position that you've told it, uh, go and find the right set of menu items that you should be displaying. Uh, and also, let's also see whether it'll let us extract this monstrosity. Into a method. If this causes me too much pain, I won't bother. Okay, it's going to let me. So, um, that was just too much code there. So let's make that into a separate method. So now our on creates a little bit simpler. Get hold of the position that we were being told about. Use that position to find out what items we're interested in. Um, uh, oh yeah, oh, the bit I've missed is this. Uh, and then, oh, it's a good thing. It's a good thing I took you through what we were actually doing, isn't it? Okay. Um, so, get hold of what position we. Uh, we we're in. Uh, find the items that, that are at that position, and then use this list adapter to display those items. But not at the moment. We're still using the global items. So now change it to use the items that we're actually interested in. Um, go and find the list you said it's adapted to be this adapter, which is the items, and then add a listener that listens to. Um, uh, events uh, where you click on one of those items. Right, let's run that and see whether it's at all working. <clears throat> so if this is, if this works nicely, we should still get stuff printed out when you click on the demo and about buttons. And when you click on the start game button, you ought to get a second menu display. So let's see what we get. So. Take your snapshot 
So it says it still says start game demo on about. Let me click on demo. Touch rather on demo. You can see the demo gets printed, and when I touch about, about gets printed. Now I'm going to touch start game and refresh, and you can see that we're now seeing easy, medium, and hard. Uh, and that's as far as we go. If I if I go on to medium now, everything's going to go pear shaped. When I press medium. Yeah, it actually it crashed because medium is the one with children, and it wasn't expecting that. Okay, so um, we're getting somewhere, but we're not there yet. Um, so what we've managed to do is we've managed to allow you to navigate one level down the menu hierarchy by supplying the position in the menu you want to go to. But actually, this could be a multiple level hierarchy, uh, not just one level. In fact, the hierarchy that we've defined. Is three levels one, two, three. Um, so it's already this is already not good enough to represent this, which is why the program crashed. So what we need is that that state that we're passing around um, is not just an integer saying what position we're at, but actually a list of integers saying go to position one and then position two, then position three, and so on. Um, so instead of putting um, just a position, an int in here, we're going to need to put in a, an array of ints. So, and that array of ints is actually going to be part of the um, the state of our menu activity class. So all this means we're going to need a member variable. Our first non-static member variable is going to be called. It's going to be an array of ints, and it's going to be called positions. And we're going to get it out of the intent. The way we're going to get it out of the intent is instead of saying get in extra, we're going to say get in array extra. And we're going to say positions equals uh, get hold of that int array. And if it comes back null, which of course it can be, it can be. Then we're just going to make it into the way to make things simpler. So basically, we get out of the intent as before. We ask for an array of ints. So we're expecting that that's going to be passed to us. So in a minute, we'll have to make sure that's really true. We're expecting an array of ints um, at this key. So we get back an array of ints or null. I think I think that's right. And if it's null, we just make it an empty array. So if it, if it's an empty array, that means we haven't navigated down any menu items yet. Okay, so what we're going to need to do is instead of, we used to have just one integer saying what, what item we're at. So now we're going to have an array of integers saying go to this place, then this place, then this place, then this place. So we need to improve our navigate to items method so that it can navigate through, all the way down through that menu. So what we're going to say is we're basically going to have a return value, and I like to call my return values ret. Um, and basically, we have we're now being passed an array of ints for positions. And whenever there's a new, whenever there are any more positions in that array, we need to go further into the menu. So. Just loop. It's really simple, actually, almost simpler than the code was before. Um, we start off saying if there are no positions being passed in here to navigate through, well, then we're just going to return menu items. But if some positions have been passed in, we're going to navigate down through the menu. So basically, what we do is we say. If we were given a position, then go and find that position in our current thing and get its children, and then that's going to be what we return unless there are more positions to go down through. So that's it. We just navigate down all the way down through those items, assuming, by the way, that this children is not null because those positions are always correct. And that's our navigate to items method. So that's all very well. We're assuming that an array of ints is being passed to us. Um, from this intent, but we're not actually passing array of ints yet, we're still passing a single int, so that's not good enough, is it? So what we need to do, instead of 
putting just in the current position that we're in, we need to put in all the positions that were already chosen, plus the new position that's just been chosen. Right, and so all the positions, all the positions that were already chosen are stored in this member variable. Um, and the new position is there. So in the same world, we could just do that or something, and uh, you'd end up with an array that's one longer that has the new position in, but you can't do that, so let's do it manually. And the way we're going to do it manually is... Should we call this method? Um, append, let's see, append to. Append array. Let's call it append, append array. Append to array. Append to array. Okay. And we're going to do um, another alt return and it's going to create as a method called append to array. Let's put it in menu activity. It's going to return an array of int. going to take in a rev int and another int to add on to it. And here's some code I prepared earlier because this is really annoying. I called it appended before but anyway. So append to array makes a new int, that's a new array of int which is one longer than the one we, we were given. It then copies from the one we were given into the new one everything it then adds on at the, in the very last position, uh, the very last uh, part, uh, bit of the array it's going to return. It adds in that new thing that we've been asked to append and then it returns it. Okay, so it's just, this is just a utility function. Append something to an array. I feel like it ought to be there. To be fair, in, in the right versions of libraries, you do have um, uh, arrays. Dot, uh, copy of which does this makes this a bit more convenient but it's still not quite as easy as I'd like. Um, let's try before you. Okay, so let's try running our code um, with that and if we've done it right we'll be able to navigate all the way through the menu structure um, and see See, log messages come up when we press on an item that doesn't have any children and see ourselves navigate further down the hierarchy when we do an item that does have children. So let's just try some items without children first. I'm going to touch about. We should see if I set the filters right that about got printed out. If I touch demo, demo gets printed out. If I touch start game, well actually let me show you a screenshot now. So screenshot, the screen at the moment looks like that. If I touch start game, then we can see the easy, easy, medium, and hard levels. If I go back, if I touch on easy, then easy gets printed out. If I touch on hard, then hard gets printed out. But if I touch on medium, hooray, we go through to the four medium levels being displayed. And I'll just check that when I touch them, stuff gets printed. It does indeed. So, um, we now have a hierarchical menu, so we're almost there. Um, we're going to, as I said before, we're going to leave this log message just just logging something out. We're not going to do anything clever uh, there, but that's where you would do stuff um, based on the, the, the user clicking on your menu items, um, and each potentially each menu item is going to do a different thing. So we're not going to uh, look at that today. But, uh, the other thing we need to do is make sure we're dealing properly with the back and the up actions. So because we've done everything to do with activities, um, uh, and we've launched activities based on the previous activity, the back button already works for us. So if I look back, we're currently looking at um, the medium levels. If I do back on the phone and refresh, you can see we're back at easy, medium, hard. If I go back again, we're back at start game. So basically, but because we've launched activities, Android handles um, the fact that we then can go back to a previous activity from there, and it does it all for us, which is lovely. Now, the other thing that the Android um, guidelines tell you is that if you're navigating through a hierarchy like this, um, down into sub-items and sub-items, 
you ought to provide a so-called up action in your um, action bar, which is the bit at the top that, that says menu sample with a little robot. Uh, now, of course, because life is never that simple, the up action is indicated by a left pointing arrow. So we ought to implement our left pointing arrow. Uh, and here's how we're going to do it. When you're on this page, um, at the top level, there is no up location to go to. We're at the very beginning of our program. This is the top level. Um, so there should be no arrow, no so-called up arrow displayed there. But then when we navigate down, for example, if I navigate back down, uh, by pressing start game, there ought to be a little arrow here saying you can go up in this structure back up to start game. You can kind of see why it's called up now because it's, it's, it's going back up in the hierarchy even though, uh, the arrow is pointing to the left. So we, how do we make an arrow point to the left? Well, I've got some notes here. I'll just check them out. Um, here's my code. So. Once we've got hold of um, the positions uh, which we've been passed in, there'll either be an empty list um, of positions because we're at the top level, or it'll be a non-empty list because we're somewhere down the hierarchy. So it's got a nice easy decision for us um, about whether or not we show the home the up button visible. Basically, oh, okay. So import that code. Um, if if we are anywhere down inside the menu, then positions dot length, the number of positions will be greater than zero. So what we do is we get hold of the action bar, and we set this. We we call this ridiculously long method, and it makes a little left arrow appear. So that's all very well. But then the question is, um, how do we respond to that left arrow being pressed? Well, in order to respond to the left arrow being pressed, we just override a method um, in the main in the outside class, and the method that we override is this one. Um, so let's stick that in here. So we just override a method called get support parent activity intent, and, and what we do. So basically, what happens is when you when the user presses that left arrow. This method gets called, we return an intent, and then that intent gets launched for us. So we don't have to do the launching this time, we just give them back an intent. So what we want to do is give them back a menu activity, i.e. another one of these. Um, and this is just the context that we're currently in now. And we want to put in to the intent a position, which is all of our current positions, except the very last one taken off. Um, because we want to go back one level up the menu hierarchy, so we just take off the last thing you pressed off the list. Um, <clears throat> so, we, in order to do that, we need to take this array and um, uh, just take away the last item in that array. And we, uh, unfortunately, we need a little um, utility function to do that. But here's one I wrote earlier. Let's put it next to the one that grows an array, shall we? So this is just a shrink an array by one. Horrible name. This method name should be much better. Anyway, you pass in an array of int, you get back an array of int. And the array of int you get back is smaller than the one that was passed in. So you take the length of the one that was passed in, reduce it by one. Then you do an array copy from this thing that was passed in into the Thing we're going to return, copying everything up to um, the amount of space we've got left, and then you return. So that shrinks this array by one. Notice that it'll never have a, it'll never get past an empty array in, um, because we check that. Um, so we we won't, it won't. If there's an, a length of zero, we won't end up with an enabled button, and therefore. We won't get this method called, or at least that's what I'm counting on, and that's what seems to happen. Okay, so with all that code in place, uh, we've got a hopefully working up button. So let's have a look at that. Let's launch again. While it's launching, I'll check my notes whether there's anything else I was 
So it has. Um, so I've done the items. We've done it menu. We've done all that stuff. We've done all that stuff. Yeah, so we are very near the end if this works. So here's what it looks like on the phone. Um, and if I press the start game, if I touch the start game button, the screen changes look like this, and you can see there is a little left arrow there, which is the up um, button, so-called, um, that, take, that takes you up through the menu hierarchy. So it's a bit different from the back button. They talk about this on the Android uh, website. Often it will do the same thing as the back button. Basically, the back button takes you back to wherever you were a minute ago, whereas the up button takes you up one level in the menu hierarchy. So if you if you came from if you came down from start game through to easy, medium, hard, well then the back button and the up button will both get you back up to the um the start game top level menu. Um but if you came here from somewhere else the back button would take you back there, whereas the up button would still take you up one level in the hierarchy. So that doesn't make sense. Read the Android website. It kind of you know often they're the same as Put it that way. So if I press medium, touch, sorry, if I touch medium, I'll get through into this list of medium levels. Now if I touch the up button, so if I touch on the little robot symbol basically, then that takes me back to easy, medium, hard. So it works. Now if I do back, it takes me again up to uh, the next level. So let's just go down into start game again. And I'm going to touch the little robot. When I touch the little robot, I go back up to start game. And notice when I'm back up at this um, top menu, there's no left arrow because there's nowhere higher up to go. But you can, of course, press back and it'll take you out into the Android uh, homepage or something like that. So there are differences. Anyway, um, by doing all of that, We've managed to make a um, fairly attractive looking, I think, nice and simple, attractive looking menu system that looks like a standard Android application. Um, I don't know whether it looks like a standard way of navigating menus in an Android application, but it's kind of the way I'd like it done. Uh, although, uh, if you look on the Android website about style, they talk a lot about pushing the content up to the very front page. So you shouldn't be navigating through tons of menus before you get to anything interesting. It should be right there in the face when you start. Um, which I think is a good idea. But I'm not going to do it um, for the game that I'm writing right now. Um, because there's a few layers of choices you have to make before you can start and... <sighs> tough. Um, Especially because I make it run on other platforms where that makes more sense potentially. Anyway, the point is, you are going to, uh, uh, with some Android apps, you are going to want a genuine hierarchical menu structure. You want the back button to work. You want the up button to work. Um, uh, and the way, the, the way it seems to me you should do that is by using activities and launching a new activity when you uh, go down uh, one level of the menu structure. Uh, there are these things called fragments, um, and it's possible we should be using them. It's possible that they're related to um, um, tablet screens where you've got more room to play with. I haven't looked into fragments. Um, uh, and my experience with Android is growing as I make these videos, so please do correct me in the comments. Anyway, we now have a hierarchical mini structure that works the way, uh, vaguely the way it should in Android. And next time we will um, make a game loop in which we're rendering graphics on the screen several times a second, um, rendering images onto the screen um, and pausing the right amounts in order to make the frame rate look okay. It's not going to be the most um, high performance graphics loop, but it's going to be following the Android guidelines for making your graphics uh, work nice and fast. Um, so it's not going to be some super 3D game, but it's going to draw images and it's hopefully going to look smooth even on quite an old phone. So see you next time.